So you're uber beginner and you don't know how to do anything solar. First experience. This was our first experience too, and I wanna show you how it went, where the shortcomings were, where we struggled and where we excelled. If you're thinking about buying the EG4 solar system, especially if you're thinking about that indoor wall mount battery, there are some shortcomings that we didn't foresee and we didn't plan accordingly. So hopefully our experience can help you plan a little bit better. So I'm going to take you through the whole process of how it's delivered, unpackaging and mounting it. When doing the research to find out what solar system we wanted to work with, we looked around at a lot of different companies and we finally settled on Signature Solar because first of all, their prices were very competitive. Secondly, it seemed really easy for the uber beginner, which we are. Never done solar before, no previous experience. So we wanted to go off grid and we've done it. We're running completely off of solar. There were some shortcomings that we just didn't quite have planned. You know, you're just making up everything. So let's show you the whole experience. Our package is getting delivered today, but it's huge. So they have to ship it by freight truck. And the problem with that is that it can't get into our neighborhood. Therefore, we have to arrange pickup on the highway. The FedEx freight delivery guy called me directly to set up a neutral place that we could both get in and out of without troubles. So this offload onload situation went really smooth because he's got all these nice lifts. You're supposed to do a thorough inspection of the product, make sure nothing was damaged in transit. Everything looked really great. So we headed on home with our package to unload it in our new house. But now the next challenge is how do we get this unloaded? You pull it out. Oh, my legs. <laughs> Grab my legs. Grab my legs. <laughs> You think I'm being kidding? What, what am I supposed to do? Mike? Yeah, hold my feet. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's working! <laughs> you didn't think that was gonna be No, possible? I didn't think that was gonna work. <laughs> oh, tailgate. Now we need to take the tailgate off. <laughs> In this delivery, we had the EG4 6000 XP inverter, 100 feet of PV wire line, the conduit box, and the EG4 indoor wall mount battery. Easy peasy, unload the conduit box and the PV wire. And easy peasy because I have a husband to unload the XP inverter but then we've got to unload that wall mount battery and this weighs 282 pounds. So I'm going to test to see if I can help unload it. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. No, but I can't even budget. So we call in a neighbor to come help. And since we happen to have a scaffold with wheels on it, that makes it a little easier to unload too. But this thing's still kind of a beast. Not only is the battery itself 282 pounds, but then there's also the pallet and all of the packaging that keeps it safe. Success, we got it inside the house. But now we need a lift at 10 feet in the air to get it on a loft. And we don't have a lift, so we're gonna jimmy rig up a system. We're using a Harbor Freight come along some chains and we're lifting the entire thing with the pallet. But the come along was only able to get it to this height and we had to release it back down, readjust the chains and waste it up some more. Our anchor point in the ceiling was two by four spread across those ceiling rafters and it was working well. But I had to really give it some leverage and releasing it down onto the loft because we had to push it over was a little bit of a challenge. It was easy but we're not ready to install. We need to insulate and drywall the walls. Now we're ready. We're putting some three quarter inch plywood underneath that battery to reinforce the floor that it sits on. But that battery is so heavy. We're really having a hard time getting anything done around it. We'll figure out some leverage and get that board scooted all the way to the back of the wall. Definitely would advise to have whatever location you're putting this in to be prepped before it arrives. 
Now finally, the moment we've been waiting over a month to do. Open it up and take a look at this thing. So it needs to be turned. Not that way. It's easy to move it on the pallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's gonna be lighter. The battery comes with two positive connecting wires, two negative, and a communication wire, along with some mounting hardware. You might be thinking that we're kind of dumb to be taking this whole pallet apart, uh, because in a minute here, you're going to see the ropes that are installed on the battery so that you can tandem lift the battery out of the crate. So you can lift it. Oh, that's gonna be so much easier to get it out. But we can't use them because we're on this three foot wide loft that is less than five feet tall. So we don't have the space above to stand up straight to lift it. And we don't have enough space to the side to lift it out and set it aside. Jungle cargo off a ship or something. Just have to edit all this shit out. If I lift, you can slide and it'll push the styrofoam onto this corner. Over the corner? Yeah. Flat bar at least, but... Knowing what we know now, I think we would still buy the same big battery. Because <laughs> now that we've been using it, we really like it. In fact, we will be getting more. I'll just have to figure out how to get him up there. There, it's wider now. Wider? Lighter. What if we just stand it up? Okay. So if you can lift with the rope so you have control over this thing, and I'll lift the pallet. One, two, three. This a wall mount bracket here. Well, shoot, where's the instructions? <laughs> ah, the last time. They're at the house. We brought them back to look at. Oh, they were smart about those ropes. Yeah. Okay, so this has these big old anchor screws. There's six of them. Yeah. yeah. So these, are, but the downside is, is these are for concrete. They're for wall mounting. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Have handles? Yeah. Oh, and it has handles. Okay, that helps. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's in a good spot structurally. Broke handles are awesome, even though we barely used them. That's what's well, such a good idea, especially when you get it from the pallet and you have it on the ground and you're like, okay, let's just set this up right here in the basement and you and another guy can just pick it up out of the pallet. Yeah, that really helps. That's the wall mount bracket that was on the back of the battery. It just has a few screws holding it on. So you take that off, put it on the wall at the exact height of the battery. The weight of the battery is resting on the feet of the battery and the wall mount is just to keep it from tipping over. You're going into a drywall screen. <laughs> Perfectly right there. If I edit out the things like this to make our video cleaner, you wouldn't see that there are a lot of challenges, unknown and unpredictable, that goes into installing. It's working. I'll just go back tight. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, we actually have to lift it up. Wouldn't it be too hard if we could stand up? I'm gonna have to make it in the middle. These are the screws that we removed to get that bracket off of the battery to mount it to the wall and now we're putting those screws back in. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, oh. Uh, crashes through the floor. Breaks down and busts everything from here out. It's four. Spills out. Ta-da! Battery mounted. Next inverter. Pinch the tip <laughs> and roll it off. But that's how you got them on. That'll work both ways. The inverter comes with a cardboard template so you can outline where your screws go to easily get that mounted. As previously mentioned that this loft is only five feet tall so there's not enough space to mount these with the inverter above the battery like most people have them. So we're just kind of dry fitting to see if these wires are going to connect to the battery and reach around to where the inverter needs it to be. Do you want to hold this or do you want to run the screw? I feel like I've messed up the screw okay. today. Let me if you I've just screwed a million times. You've been screwed a million times, but you no. never done screwing. <laughs> Alright. What's the matter with you? So okay. you can pick this up by the very bottom. Because the handles get awkward once you get it up. Like because How about you lift it up with the handles and then I hold it up with the bottom? With the bottom. Right about there. You got her? I think so. Okay. Oh, I do. Easier than you expected. I think it's a little bit. It is, but you're good. Oh, I think I need to go over this way a little bit. I'm totally guessing again. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. That thing's tough. Just just this shit. Well, on this side, CH, just take a little hair. Pink. Okay. Okay. Now, I presume we probably have to take these four squares off, and that gets us into here. There's also doors. Load, grid, generator, PV input, battery input, calm. This is when the instructions. The oh, shit. Down the stairs. Right there. This looks pretty good. I like it. Looks expensive. It looks cool. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. Now we read the manual for a week. So as you saw, we were really struggling with the height that we had to go onto, the narrowness of our loft, and that the height on the loft was not adequate for the height that we needed to stack the inverter on top of the battery. Also trying to stand up while we're hunched like this to, to get that battery lifted out of the crate. We struggled there a lot. You're probably gonna make it easier for yourself. Not like us, we like to make things really hard. But was this system easy for the Uber beginner that has no previous experience? Yeah, it really wasn't that complicated. The instruction manual for the inverter had so many caveats to how you can set it up and just so many different ways and different on the grid, off the grid, um, backup power in series. Like there's so many ways that you can use this. It's so versatile, which is one of the great things about it, but kind of made it complicated and hard to understand to wrap your mind around it when you've never done solar before. So we did have to refer to some videos. This was not something you could just pull out of the box, read the owner's manual, and just hook it up with no previous experience. You either need to have experience with understanding how it all hooks up or watch some videos to see how somebody else did it. I highly recommend going to this guy's video because he lays it out to hooking it up to the batteries and the power and then running some load. So was it worth it? Would we buy it again? Yeah. Yeah, we would, even though we struggled, even though we don't know how we're going to get a second wall mount battery up on that loft, we're gonna buy another one. We wanna have two batteries. We've been running on solar for two months now and we've had no complaints, no complaints. We started at the worst possible time, in the middle of the winter, during a lot of storms, 
like we had everything stacked against us. Like I said, we like to do everything the hard way. Just wanted to show you as an uber beginner that's never done this before, that it can be done and that this system worked out really well for us. So if this is a system that you want to install, that you feel like would be a good fit for you, uh, there's, you can check the links below. We're going to do it again. I don't know what's wrong with us. We'll probably order it in the worst possible time and have a lot more struggles because that's just what we like to do. If you want to see more of us struggling, subscribe to the channel and follow along as we build our brand new off-grid homestead and live sustainably. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, share with your friends.